All right, let's go. I'm not sure. Do I have curly hair? <sighs> anyway, uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a really fun automation that I heard about a couple years ago when I was listening to a Tim Ferriss podcast with Patrick Collison. So let's listen to a short snippet from that podcast and you'll see what we're gonna automate today. Cut. Um, so it was not going well, as you're hearing. Uh, we eventually decided to write a little script uh, to sort of just like come up with kind of random um, potential names and, and actually to kind of check whether the relevant domain names were available. Uh, uh, because, you know, it was important for an online company that we kind of have the .com domain. Um, and I can't even remember how, but Stripe is one of the words that ended up sort of on our list of names to check. So ever since I heard that podcast the first time, I've just always thought that that was such an interesting automation and such an interesting use of programming to automate a task that can be quite boring and quite repetitive. And it just seems like such a useful but quite simple script to actually implement and to create. So today, that's what we're gonna be doing. All right, so let's start by just making the to-do for this project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the actual project and then uh, write down a list of requirements or to-dos for what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I'm calling this is a name gen roulette because we're basically generating names and it's kind of like a roulette type game. Okay, so the requirements for this is that we need to find a word list of some kind, uh, probably a couple different word lists. I know that there's lists for bird names, so that could be a potential one. And then also common nouns in the English language. So I think that's what uh, Patrick Collison used for uh, the Stripe when they did, uh, when they created their bot. I think they use common English nouns. Um, and then basically randomly select the word from that list, open up godaddy.com, and this is gonna be like a headless browser. We're gonna scrape the website using Selenium, and then look up the domain name, see if it exists or if it's available. Uh, that is the .com domain name. If the .com is available, then we should print that to the screen and then let the user decide whether they want to go uh, with that name or whether they want to actually just continue to find new names. So that's essentially the idea. And uh, the first thing is gonna to be to find a word list. I'm gonna start with bird names because I think that's kind of a good thing. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna use for this, uh, for this automation. All right, so now I have <clears throat> basically done this part and I've created my API key which is something that you can find very easily. You basically just go to this uh, eBird API PyP page. Here you can find the way to uh, the form or the place, the site that you need to fill in the stuff for where you get the API key. Once you have that you can basically start to query the API and what I get from that is this stuff. So a long list of just spacey names and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fix this actually so that we can actually read it. All right, and before we continue, this video is sponsored by Kite. Kite is a free auto completion engine that uses machine learning to provide the completions, which is what makes it stand out and also what makes it the best auto completion engine that I've used. One of the most useful features is that Kite's completions are sorted or ranked by relevance instead of by popularity or by the alphabet. This is possible because they're using machine learning to provide the completions. It means that you will get suggested completions based on the code that you're actually writing. And if you're writing code in Python, the Copilot feature offers documentation lookup, so you don't have to constantly Google search function signatures and call patterns. With Kite, you can actually write code up to 18% faster. And who doesn't want to write code faster, right? So I highly recommend that you download Kite and try it out. It's completely free and supports up to 13 programming languages and 16 IDEs. So just give it a go. I know that you will like it because I love it. All right, so here we go. Uh, as you can see here in the terminal, what we get is the JSON response. And now we can start to like parse that and uh, actually get the stuff that we'd really want from this, which is the common name, I think. Uh, that's probably what we want. 
So I'm going to do that and see what we get from that list. And then we probably can start using that list for generating uh, startup names. I've basically gone through uh, this response that we get and cleaned it up a little bit so that we just get the spacey name that we could then potentially use as a, uh, a company name or a domain name uh, essentially. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically going through all of this, I'm cleaning the list up a little bit here and then I'm creating a list of bird names and then I'm generating a random int that is within the range of the length of the bird list. And then I'm just printing a random name from that bird list. And that's essentially the first step of this entire thing. Uh, the second step will be to actually open up uh, or to do some web scraping with Selenium. But now if we run this, I'm just gonna show you kind of what happens. All right, so there we go. We get a name of a species, bittern. Never heard of it, but if you think about it, like bittern.com could potentially be a domain name or a uh, company name. I don't know if it's a good one, but it could be one. And that's essentially the idea now. It's just to use that and then go to the website, find the domain name, see if it's available. If it's available, then show the user and then allow the user to either continue to search for more names or to choose to open up the website for real and like actually go to it and uh, buy the domain. All right, so let's attempt to actually implement that. Okay, so uh, right now I've created a new file called domainscraper.py and in this we're basically querying this or we're getting this URL. We're opening up a, uh, we're using Selenium to open up a web browser and then we're going to uh, the GoDaddy domain search thing and I noticed that when I go to the, the home page, you could type, you could do something where you go here and then you have to click here with Selenium, type something in and then again, click here and press search. But what I noticed is that if we type in domain and then search up here in the URL, you can see that it actually looks like you can basically just change this part of the URL and that will then give you a search for a domain name. So if I wanted to check hello.com, then I would just change that, send search for it. And here we go, we get to this page. So that means that we don't need to do too much clicking on the website, which is usually a bad thing to do because sometimes it changes the website and it's just very difficult to click on things. We can basically just save this part of the, uh, of the URL and then just append the bird name Dot com and then we get to this page which searches for birdname.com is available by the way if you want to if you want to buy it so now we basically just need to check if the domain name is available which is what i'm trying to do here so it's going to print available.txt i'm not sure if i'm getting the right element right now so we're going to try to run this and uh, see if it actually works All right, so it seems like it's working now. Uh, spiderhunter.com is available. Uh, so if you want to name your company spiderhunter.com, then that's available. One of the, the problems with that I've found a couple times with Selenium is that uh, it will move on to the next function, which is like element by xpath. It will move on to that before the page is loaded. And that's why it sometimes comes back with like, uh, stuff like this, like that it wasn't able to find a certain div or a certain path. So what I usually do a quite bad workaround is I do time.sleep and I sleep for two seconds just to allow the website to actually load and then it usually works. So for the final thing, I wanted to actually not open up a browser and it, I wanted to just search through all of this stuff without doing that. And then once it finds a, an available domain name, then I want the user to be able to choose to open up a browser and essentially buy the domain if they want to. So that's what we're gonna do.
All right, so now I think uh, I've got it to work. Essentially what I've done is I've done all of this stuff I've created, I've changed the browser to be headless instead, which means that it basically just doesn't open up a browser window. So it does all of this kind of in the background, if you will, so that I don't have to notice it. And then I've also implemented a kind of a menu system uh, that's just a way for the user to interact with the script in some sort of way. So you can choose kind of what to do with the results that come. So let's run it and see what we get from it. If we can find a domain name that we like. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, it seems like it found a domain called bunting.com. And uh, no, I don't know if it's a great domain name or anything, but that's what it found. And now we see this menu that pops up, which allows us to either open up the godaddy.com to see uh, this domain and kind of see if it's actually real or if we want to buy it. And then we can press two to keep searching. So basically if we don't like the domain name, we can just keep searching for more and then three to quit. So I want to press one because I want to see if this domain actually is available because I don't, I'm not sure that the script actually works right now. Okay, so bunting.com is available and it's 1,544 pounds. It's a premium domain, but it's available. So it seems like the script is working thus far. Uh, so what I wanna do now, is I'm gonna press two to keep searching. Okay, plowbill.com is available. I don't want that too drongo.com <laughs> but anyway it seems like it is actually working and it finds the different domain names that are available and based on the bird names that we found uh, i think it's super useful actually because this sometimes the process of like finding domain names that are available can be super tedious and like you come up with a name that you think is really good but then it's not available so this kind of automates that process uh, it probably takes a while still before you find something that you actually like. Flycatcher.com is available, but it's for 15,000 pounds. But that's a really good domain name for someone, I guess. That's why it's, I guess that's why it's super expensive. Anyway, that's this automation done. All right, so that's that. This now works and we have our startup name generation automation completed. And this can of course be expanded upon. You don't have to use bird names. It was just something that I used because I thought it was fun and I thought it had some potential for maybe creating some interesting company names. Uh, and let me know what you think, but I think this was a really fun idea and kind of a really interesting automation to try that can also be quite helpful or quite useful. And if you want to, you can of course expand on this. I will leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description in case you want to check this out yourself or try to expand upon this yourself. For instance, what you could do is like allow the user to actually choose what type of word list to use. So you could have multiple word lists. So for instance, if the company is related to like football stuff, then you could have a word list with like terms or words that are related to football. And that would be what we would be generating the names. Um, so that's just kind of an idea and that could be expanded upon on and on really. But anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.